Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. I think the worst thing that you can do as an actor is forget your lines, get so flustered that you start stabbing the other actors. And Oh, welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast where every week we review one whiskey and one beer. I'm professional brewer John Passo. I'm whiskey connoisseur, Joe Clark. Well, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up, and this episode I am psyched about. We have Bell's Two-Hearted IPA. And for the whiskey, Micker's Limited Release Toasted Barrel Finished Bourbon. I like these guys. They they come in like right on cue. So I know you're really excited about this one because you are a huge Michter's fan. Very huge, and, yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited also, I'm not gonna lie here. So let's set this right here. They started releasing this about fall of 2014. Uh, and it is a toasted barrel finished bourbon. It is actually just literally no changes made to it. They're US number one whiskey that you find in your the, stores, the bourbon. The bourbon. Mm-hmm. And um, it is uh, then reintroduced into a custom built toasted barrel and that's it. it. It's pretty cut and dry on that. And it changes the characteristic of that whiskey so much. And that barrel is actually an 18-month air-dried wood cask. Oh, nice. And um, there's nothing, like I said, there's nothing extra done. That's it, That's highly taught in about this bottle is that they didn't change anything with the recipe. They mm-hmm. just took It's just a, a different finishing barrel. Very limited release, small batch of this comes out every year. Nice. All right. Nice. And uh, what do you think? Want to I, take a nose on this? Uh, well, that's yeah. going to be up to you. But uh, well, you've been color. You've been dying to try I'm, this. I'm really itching on this one, John. I'm I'm super excited. I knew about this like a week ago or so, and uh, <laughs> this is this is a big deal for you. Yeah. This is a big yeah. deal. Yeah, so. it is. What what do you get on the nose on here? You've well, been actually, before here. you do that, I'm going to take a look at this. So it's got some nice long legs. It's uh. Yeah, it's oily. That's for sure. It's a yeah, it's a it is. Drink. It's, it's a nice thick drink. Oh, I'm so excited. Nice color, mm-hmm. but not super. No, not dark super dark red or, anything or like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a look here, guys. Yeah, nice. This whole time that we've been rehearsing and getting ready for this, we've had these things open and airing the whole time. Joe's like, I can just, I can just, it just I fills smell. the room. I just smell it. I'm smelling it. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it fills the room. It's just like, oh my gosh, man, this whole area here stinks like it, which is good. So now that you can actually get your nose into it, what are you picking up? So this whole time that this has been sitting here, I am picking up um, a very creamy, candy, buttery smell to it candy butter it's very very sweet smell to it um a lot of brown sugar and like butter like if you were making um like you it almost kind of that smell of when you do like i don't know if you ever did when you were younger the cinnamon toast with the butter on yeah, it and yeah, stuff uh-huh, like that yeah. Yeah, kind of like that going on to it on the nose it's really interesting wow. and you have like some barrel characteristics to it also okay a lot of caramel notes and vanilla notes in there. And these are powerful notes. When these notes are coming out, it's not like you're hunting for them to find them and really taking a lot of deep breaths in. This is powerful. It fills this area. I could have it sitting on the table in front of me that you can't see, and it you can smell this walking into the room. That's how crazy this wow. is. So uh, All from just doing it in a second barrel, finishing barrel. That's Amazing. It. Amazing. That's it. No changes. And that is really cool. And that tells you that... It's not just luck a lot of times doing it. There's a lot of science that goes behind this. Absolutely. You know I mean? It's an art. Like, it's an art. Not just a bunch of hillbillies sitting up and trying to figure out yeah. how to make this. Yeah. yeah. Shall we jump in? Absolutely. We got to get into this <laughs> right. right now. Okay. Mm. Holy crap. <laughs> right off the... Wow. Right off of the front end, I mean, just huge, toasted, caramely um, wood. The caramel is, is subtle on the front end, but it is just nothing but barrel in a very good marshmallows. way. Marshmallows. Mo- toasted uh, marshmallows. I can get that. I can toasted see that. Toasted marshmallows is what I'm getting on this heavily. Wow. Mmm. This is one of those drinks that leaves you speechless. 
It really does. It's it's just the weight of it in your mouth is very heavy. It's yeah. very oily. The finish on this is super long and it'll probably stick around until you, I don't know, rinse out with some mouthwash or something. <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean wow. the, what Joe's saying about the weight and the, the length of the finish, I'm absolutely in agreement with him. I have never had a whiskey that grabs me right off of the bat. I mean, it grabs you by the boo-boos, man. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, it, I mean, it just, it grabs you and it doesn't let go. And it's not like it is slamming you with splintery, oaky barrel tannins. Nope. No, it is barrel, it is marshmallow, it is roast, it is brown sugar. And Caramel. it is just Little big. spice I get mid-palate. And it kind of okay. lingers around uh, in, in the uh, aftertaste for me here. I do get kind of a, a little bit of the cooking spice in there too, but um, this is for a bourbon. It's actually pretty sweet. Um, not overpoweringly in a bad way. Uh, I, I do tend to like sweeter drinks like this because uh, you have like the toasted marshmallows, the caramel, the brown sugar, um, all, all that stuff going on. And it's just, it's married so well. It's mm -hmm. very complex. I bet you could really and it is 91.4 proof. It's not a high proof bourbon. There's really no bite to this at all. No, it is just it is, straight flavor bomb. It goes down too smooth. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to disagree with you about the perceived sweetness. For me, I've come across a lot sweeter whiskeys like um, Eagle Rare. For me, is a very sweet one. This is less sweet than a regular bourbon release. Okay. Because of that barrel kind of marries a little bit with the sweetness and mm -hmm. makes it more balanced. But for me, I get flavors that identify with sweeter things like the marshmallow yes, that's that you're talking, talking about. about. So, but I don't get like a marshmallowy sweetness to it. Right. It's not like um, you already said it, John. You said it's a very well balanced sweetness to it. It's mm. not like an overpowering like you're dumping sugar in your coffee to okay. get rid of the coffee kind of thing. OK. Um, this is a very well balanced drink. Um, yeah, don't mix that with like the Eagle Rare. Not, okay. not at all. This okay. is a very high end bourbon here. We're drinking. Absolutely. And it's very well crafted, very well balanced, as he said. Yeah. Um, I really can't say much more than this other than Michter's. You guys knocked it out of the park with this. This is insane how yeah. different you just take your US one bourbon, stick it in a second barrel, and age it, and it comes out like this. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's incredible with different barrel charrings and, you know, charring meaning actually they, you know, can burn a barrel for 15 seconds or I believe up to seven minutes or so. And then that's that, like that long one is your alligator char. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, this is why Michter's is one of my favorite distilleries around is because their entry level, I feel, is really solid. Their bourbon is one of my favorite bourbons around. OK. The limited release stuff. You know, I've had the 10 year bourbon, yeah. had the 10 year rye. Yeah. I mean, and then this now. Yeah. Yes, this is why you I see love why them. it's hard to get. <laughs> Absolutely. And why it's limited release because it's that yeah. good. And then sometimes you just have to hunt and find stuff like this, guys. And it's 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 hard to get. But uh, once you do, you, you appreciate it. Uh, well, that's it. That's this is the whiskey. We'll be back in a couple minutes for the uh, for the beer. John's but gonna have some bottle chugs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back soon. All right. Back. We now have the Chaser. So this is Bell's Brewing Company Two Hearted Ale. Nice. Um, Bell's, for those of you that don't know, was started in Kalamazoo, Michigan, by Larry Bell. He started it originally as a homebrew. Uh, company, a homebrew supply store back in 1983, and uh, he, he then started producing his own beer there in 1985. It's the seventh largest brewery in the United States, so he's got some credit. He's one of the original breweries that cropped up after uh, uh, the ban was put into effect for homebrewing was lifted, oh, wow. et cetera, et cetera. So he's like 
one of the OG Le companies. He's legit. He's legit. Yeah. He's got street cred. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. No. He's an OG. <clears throat> Two Hearted Ale is a classic by them. It's an American IPA. It's 100% Centennial hops. Um, they used Bell's House Yeast Strain for it. 7% ABV, 60 IBUs. So it's got some hot bite to it. Um, I gotta open this one here. I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? I'm excited at the same time because you know how I feel about IPAs. You know they're always hit or miss for you. Hit or miss so yes. far. So I am, uh, but I'm waiting for John to find me. This may take a while. Well, you had the uh, you had one that you liked. Yeah, you had yeah. one that you didn't like. Right. So yeah, we'll see this. We're batting one. fifty fifty, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so that's not bad. So not not too bad. Oh wow! Look at the head on these. Yeah. Nice. Giving a little bit of a rough pour, unfortunately. Talking and pouring at the same time is not my most ideal skill set. So this has got a really nice color to it. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's real nice, for sure. Look at that Good guys. fluffy head. Nice head to it. Yeah. Everybody likes a good head. Huh? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, this was named, there's two things that Two Hearted was named after. One is uh, Hemingway wrote about the big Two Hearted River in Michigan. Okay. Uh, and then also the uh, the brook trout, which is the fish on the front of the label, has two hearts. Hmm. One in the center and one back by the tail. So hopefully this doesn't taste like brook trout. What does it smell <laughs> like? <laughs> John, this is the worst period I've ever given. <laughs> I wasn't in for fish today. <laughs> I think we're done. The palace yeah, is done. We're done. We're done for the day. <laughs> right? <laughs> What are you picking up? Citrusy right off the bat. Uh, very lemony to me. Okay. Um, again, the IPA grain is shining through in this for me. That hoppy uh, kind of grainy. Yeah. yeah. Green, I'm, green. I'm learning. Okay. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, citrusy note that you're picking up is the hops. Centennial hops typically have a citrus note to it and can be floral well, as well. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that I'm going to on IPAs pick up a lot of citrus in general. Okay. Is that fair? Um, a lot of times, yeah. IPAs will have a big citrus note, whether it's grapefruit, orange, lemon, etc. Okay. But it all really depends on the type of hops that you use. You okay. can, you can okay. get floral, you can get earthy, you can get piney, foresty, so Ooh, it really okay. depends. But a lot of times, yes, IPAs can be dominated by citrus notes. This is dominated by citrus notes. For sure. Okay. Yep. All right. I am dying to try this. Prost. All right. Slunch. Oh, grapefruit. Powerful grapefruit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like it. It's um, It's not overpowering. Yeah. A little sour because of the grapefruit, but it's uh, just like the whiskey we had. It's very well balanced. It's very good. I'm going to take another chug here, guys. Mm -hmm. Now for the beer geeks out there, good. for me, I don't get the sour, but I understand what Joe's saying. I'm new to this. Uh, beers, usually if you got sour, it's an infection, but you said because of the grapefruit. Yeah, so it's in a my brain, sour. It's yeah. like uh, yeah. you're associating that kind of tartness a little bit of a citrus grapefruit flavor, which is coming from the hops, not from an infection from what I'm picking up. In no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying anything bad like that. It's just a natural fruit kind of sour grapefruit. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. No, it's not bad. No, this is really good. I get a little mm. kind of bready malt in there. Hmm. Uh, not a lot of sweetness, but enough malt sweetness that it balances the hops. Yeah, heavy grapefruit. Wow. Still very drinkable. Very drinkable. Yeah. What's the uh, proof on this again? 7% ABV. Okay. <clears throat> nice. Which is kind of... Uh, Shelf life is six months. <laughs> I'll disagree with that one. That's what Bell say. IPAs generally want three months. Um, okay. Three months. Uh, and that's when the flavors really start dropping off and becoming unbalanced. okay okay so always date check your ipas folks your double ipas your hazies etc ipas in general three months and wouldn't purchase it after that because it's going to be unbalanced this okay. is crushable this is a classic american yeah. ipa i'm down with this yeah. yeah you like that yeah yeah i could drink this yeah All i right. like it yeah i'm not going to ever turn this down so we've got one bad we got too good yeah all yeah, right we are we're there <clears throat> so that ends 
the chaser. What did you think about Mictors, Joe? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Come on. I mean, I don't even know if I have to say it. Do I even have to ask? Look at that, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> nice crafted. Mictors. That nice color. Final too. thoughts. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's good. I, I'm with yes, Joe. Awesome. Yeah. Once we cut to take the break uh, between the, the two drinks, I just leaned forward and just said, holy crap. Because that is my thoughts on this is, holy crap. That is amazing. Yes. Two thumbs way up. Yeah, yeah. All right, Bells, Two-Hearted Ale, IPA. Joe? Um, I'm going to say a thumb and a half. Thumb and a half? Yeah. Okay. One and a half for me, yeah. Good, but not the best. No, I'm finding maybe I'm not an IPA type guy. Maybe I'm wrong because this, I mean, we're only a few shows in, so that, that I'm probably going to be proven wrong on this. Um, it's good. It's not my favorite so far, but it, it's one of the better IPAs that I've had in my life. So I, mm -hmm. maybe I'm being harsh on it, but I think one and a half stars or one and a half thumbs is a good, is a good rating for this for me. I'm going to yeah. give it one and three quarters. Okay. Uh, I'm with Joe, you know, it's not the best IPA, but you know, historically it's classic. It's yeah. drinkable. Uh, it's yeah, it's damn drink. solid. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. It's better than any of the beers I've ever drank in my past. So we're moving them on up. <laughs> so you're that, talking Budweiser, <laughs> yeah, Labatt's, yeah. We're getting you into craft and real beer. Yeah. Right. So that is a starter and a chaser podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram, YouTube. All of the podcasting channels. Anchor FM, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I mean, we're out there. Uh, under our video, you can see the links to all the uh, voice side of things and just pick where you want to go. Be sure to hit subscribe, like, leave us a comment, smash that ding bell so that you get the, uh, that sounds like a, uh, a just, song from the 50s. Smash that, smash ding, that bell. ding bell. <laughs> and get your uh, uh, notifications when we post something new. <laughs> and if you want to send us an email or send us some bottles of whiskey or beer for possible inclusion in future episodes, you can send us an email at whiskeyandbeer at starterandchaser.com. And just like you said, we also, our website is starterandchaser.com. You can just check us out and uh, there's links on there to take you to all our different outlets. Thank you guys. Uh, Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. And we really like this tasting today. I'll tell yeah, you that. It was stuff. exciting. Peace out. See you yeah. guys later. And what was that? <laughs> you know, it would be terrible to start stabbing the other actors. Because I don't think that's got... what you're supposed to do. It sounds like anger management. Well,